Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plugged In with Chris Howard, and I'm taking the Lions over the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Bet Online has free odds and lines available online or on your mobile device. Visit Bet Online today. Ad Infinitum is the only podcast solely focused on audio ads. Advertising. The creatives who make them, the latest thinking that informs them, how the space is evolving, and my favorite part, a roundup of recent audio ads. Ad campaign. Analysis by yours truly, Stu Redwine, VP Creative at Oxford Road, and each episode's guest. This episode's title is Demonstrated Equals Persuaded, inspired by one of my favorite lines from Aristotle's rhetoric written 2,300 years ago, and as relevant today as it was then, quote, we are most persuaded when we consider a thing demonstrated. Aristotle's talking there about human persuasion, that when we can see a thing happening, that we understand that it actually occurs, we are persuaded. Let me show you, here's how it works, but how do we do that in audio? We've got to use the theater of the mind. That's why we've assembled a powerhouse panel from across the podcast polyverse, Amelia Coomber, head of marketing at Podscribe and host of Make Better. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, <laughs> great to be here. And and Adam McNeil, Amelia's fellow host of Make Better and VP Marketing at Adopter Media. Welcome. Excited to be here. Break down some ads. Heck yes. And thank you both for having me on Make Better. That was a ton of fun. So fun to be listening to some more ads with you. And Ariel Nissenblatt, head of community and content at squadcast.fm. Thanks for having me. Not my favorite Aristotle quote, but I'll let it slide. And then last but not least, Paul Rizmandel, Chief Insights Officer and Partner at Signal Hill Insights. Paul, stoked to have you on. Thanks. Stoked to be here. For sure. This episode, we're going to be listening to some of the top spenders in podcasts. That's via Magellan's look at the space. For the month of June, we're going to be focusing on the Audiolytics key component number four, demonstration. Audiolytics is the framework and the formula that we use to both audit and construct persuasive audio at Oxford Road. It's composed of nine key components. We've done three episodes uh, so far talking about those first three key components, setup, value prop positioning. This is episode four on demonstration, and then we'll unpack substantiation, offer, scarcity, path, and finally execution. Audio Linux key component for demonstration. So for demonstration, simply put, here's how it works. That's what demonstration means. No matter how well you accomplish the first three components, you've wasted all of it if the audience can't picture themselves using the thing. Yes, demonstration is that integral to your service or product success. The good news is that humans are built to watch closely, especially if they're watching another human. Back in the 90s, a team of Italian neuroscientists made a groundbreaking discovery in the brains of macaw monkeys. Motor cells inside their brains fired the exact same way when one monkey can a behavior as when it watched another monkey do the same thing. So in their brains and in human brains as well, watching created the sensation of doing. These cells are called mirror neurons, have unlocked major advancements in the study of how people relate to each other. They've helped clarify what exactly is happening in our brains when we experience media and imagery. And mirror neurons help explain the voyeuristic impulses that commands audiences' attention. And when we watch another person experience something, our imaginations automatically simulate that experience for ourselves, inside of ourselves, and we feel a miniature version of it. But what do we do when there's only audio, right? So for simulcast when there's video, that's great. What do we do when there's only audio? You have to use the theater of the mind. That's what we're gonna be talking about today is folks that are relying on painting a picture in our minds and the same old mirror neurons can go to work even if the person your listener is envisioning is in their own head. It's also discussed in a great book, Blindsight, The Mostly Hidden Ways Marketing Reshapes Our Brains. You can use unique attributes like sound effects, music, multiple voices, even silence to demonstrate in unexpected ways. With no further ado, let's listen to some ads and talk about how well did they handle demonstration, which is how does it work? Four top spenders from June 2023 in podcasting, according to Magellan, are BetterHelp, HelloFresh, Instacart, and the Angie Group. Amazon was on the list, but I didn't include them because they have spend across a couple of different advertisers, Amazon Music and Audible and others. So as far as the top actual spenders, We've got BetterHelp at 9.2 million approximately, HelloFresh at 3.9 million, Instacart at 3 million, and the Angie Group at 2.5 million in 2023. All right, guys, let's get started. Let's see how they showed up in podcast and how well they did a job of communicating how it works. You guys ready? Let's yeah. do it. All right, here we go. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Imagine this. You're looking at a scale. 
On one side, you've got everything you do for others. On the other side, you've got everything you do for yourself. Is it balanced? There was a time when my scale was way off on the do for other side, putting the needs of others way before my own. Then I discovered this thing called boundaries. In other words, I had to clarify my values and align my decisions and my actions in a way that allowed me to stay within the boundaries that I'd set for myself and for others. I was able to balance out my scale and so can you. Therapy can help you clarify your values, set boundaries, and find more balance in your life so you can keep being a rock star for others without forgetting yourself in the process. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash QOD today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash QOD. Adam, I'd like to start with you. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, first off, he jumps right into exactly what we're talking about, demonstrating what the product does. And he doesn't even talk about what therapy is or even talk about the brand until near the latter part of the ad itself. He's painting a picture that you can see yourself in where maybe I'm an overworked person because I'm a giver, 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 and I never take time to give back to myself. And he is framing this as though I am that listener right now. And I get through this ad, I'm like, yeah, that does sound like me. That does sound like me. Oh, man. But yeah, this sounds exhausting for my life. And the next thing you know, he goes, you should give therapy a try because therapy is one of those ways to help balance out the things in your life like that scale. And you're still holding onto that image of a scale in your head. So I think in terms of demonstration, like it's phenomenal the way that he framed it did really, really well there. My only take on the negative side is, and I don't know this podcast well, which is the critique that I'll always give is coming from, I'm only hearing the ad without listening to the rest of the episode, is that he has this tone of a podcaster voice doing an ad read, an ad read voice, which is one voice that I tend to dislike coming from a buyer's perspective is that that tone where it comes across like, yeah, this is a very formal thing, not a true authentic experience in the moment. That would be the only critique that I have. Otherwise it's very well, very well done. Scale of one to 10. I'd give it a solid eight. Uh, He doesn't give any endorsement himself, but it's a a solid ad in itself uh, without the endorsement. All right. The game is afoot. Ariel, how about you? What do you think of this one? I love when podcasters tell us exactly what to do. So in this show, picture yourself. I, I don't know if he says that exactly, but you are kind of put in the position of imagining yourself as a scale right? Like which side of you is being weighed in what direction? And you sort of have to think about yourself. You sort of have to put yourself in the shoes of this person and how you might be reacting to therapy or the the need for therapy. So I, I've been saying this for a while. I think instructive audio is the future. I think there's going to be more and more podcasts coming down the line that ask us to go on a walk or ask us to imagine this and that and ask us to think about mindfulness and things like that. And I think when we ask our listeners to do something, they are inclined to do that. So this ad, I I do agree with Adam, while it's really well spoken, and it hits all the points, and it gives me a reason to try this product. It is very much in an ad spoken voice like it. I actually at first did not think that this was a a host red ad. I thought it was an announcer red ad. So that was just a, a maybe a negative point. But other than that, I do really like that it asks me to put myself in this situation and to consider why this product might be helpful for me. However, another potential negative is just that I am so burnt out on BetterHelp. And, you know, that's just a symptom of it being one of the biggest spenders. So you're going to have to go seek therapy for how burned out you are on these guys telling people to get therapy. I'm burnt out. What an ad that would be. Are you tired of hearing BetterHelp ads? Do they haunt you at (laughs) night? Well, truly. Out of 10, what would you rate it, Ariel? I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. All right, we're going into 0.5s. All right, that's good. Go into the 10th <laughs> 6.3. place. 6.3. No, it's good. 6.3. Oh, wow. All right, it just got downgraded. It's all right. Audio Lyrics goes to the 100th place, so I respect it. Um, all right, Paul, what about you? What do you think of this ad? It's well demonstrated, but for a particular persona, there are going to be listeners who will not identify with this circumstance. If you don't identify with this circumstance, Are you going to stay tuned in? Is this relevant to you? Are you going to stick around? So for the circumstance that he outlines, it's very relevant. It's well, I think it's very well done. I really appreciate they have better help at the top. It is good to have that brand name in there. 
not only at the bottom, because even if someone tunes out because halfway through, they're like, well, this isn't me. This isn't my issue. This isn't my problem. I'm fine. Or I'm not fine, but this isn't my issue. At least they got the better help part. And, and I think that's really critical, actually. I think that's super critical. And that's what we've seen time and again when testing ads is that get those mentions in there and don't just leave them for the end. And people will remember even if they didn't hook on to other parts of the ad. And that's that's going to be my critique. It's both great right that that for the person who identifies with the circumstance i think there would be a lot of resonance and it's going to work really well but it may not work for everyone who might be a potential better help customer and that's why you don't just run one ad <laughs> you uh, and that's why you don't just want run one set of copy and that's why you want to build storytelling i think into your ads over time and not just stick with the same thing all the time. So that's that's where I am. I, I'm not bothered at all by the by it being sort of ad voice. Again, and any testing that I've done over hundreds of campaigns, we don't really see listeners responding negatively to different sort of tones of voice. They respond more to story. They respond more to what the points are and what they hear. There are listeners who tell us, "Well, I don't like ads," and we don't. I don't know that they distinguish from that tone of voice. It doesn't mean that I don't think there are listeners who may respond differently to different tone of voice, but sort of in general, podcast listeners are sort of receptive to the ads. They know their ads. So the shift up in that tone, I don't see a lot of strong indicators. Again, these are things we could always drill down and test more, but I don't see really strong indicators that it's either a turn off or a turn on for that matter. It's interesting you zoom in on that with the voice tone that you're talking about. For those of us that are the crafts people that work on them, we don't like it because we appreciate the finer things or are trying to hit this more refined target. And so it's like, oh, oh, I don't like that. That doesn't feel right because that's not like what we're aspiring to. But does, you know, the people that do the living and dying in this town, like, does it really affect them? But then, then I come all the way back around to... It doesn't hurt. I I don't think it ever hurts, particularly in podcasts, to have it sound more personal. Like, that's never going to hurt. No, it's never going to hurt. Absolutely. It's never going to hurt. But I've also tested campaigns where the announcer reads outperformed the host reads, right? This is great copy. So right here, I still think that with this particular ad, I think that the podcaster has done a fine job with it. Um, you know, I, I get the sort of the, the fine distinction. And, you know, I'm not saying that if this were read in a, in a somewhat more conversational style or it matched sort of the tone of their presentation that we wouldn't see a difference. I don't know if we would. Great point. So on a scale of one to 10, what do you grade this one? I'm on a 7.5 here. Oh, 7.5. We got an eight, 6.3, a 7.5. And now it's down to you, Amelia. What do you think of this ad and how do you grade it? Mm -hmm. I give it a 6.5. I think on the theme of demonstration, I think they were halfway there. The scale is an interesting one because, you know, to everybody else's point, you sort of imagine it. I think they could have taken it a little bit like another step further in the sense that maybe paint a picture about what not having boundaries looks like. That could be with your partner. That could be in, you know, in work. That could be with friends. So I would have liked to see more of that rather than just this sort of visual image of this scale and balance. Like I think they probably could have put more emphasis on on the actual relatability and, and painting a clearer picture that everybody goes through versus like, you know, I, I don't live on a scale. I think they could have probably done a little bit better on the demonstration side. And to what everybody else said, I think it, you know, it sounded very much like it was just very ad read voice, which is fine. And, and maybe that's what they were trying to go after. But I think a little more conversational and, you know, again, painting that better picture, giving somebody an instance that they could relate to that they probably experience in their life would be a better way. Amelia gave it a 6.5, Ariel a 6.3, and Paul and Adam gave it a 7.5 and an 8. The average comes out to a 7.07 .07, and the Audiolytic score for this particular message was a 74.4, which essentially says to me, structurally pretty much everything is there. It's missing a couple of key things that would help make it more persuasive. But when I zoom in on demonstration, what's interesting to me is through the Audiolytics lens, is demonstrating how it works. How does the product itself work? Where looking at this, the whole setup of the boundaries and all of this is like his personal segue in to how the idea of therapy works. But how does BetterHelp itself actually work? 
there is some information there, but there could probably be more. Okay, thank you guys. One down. Let's listen to the next one. We're talking about HelloFresh. So the first was BetterHelp at $9.2 million in the month of June. HelloFresh at $3.9 million in the month of June. Let's take a listen to an air check from Wizards of Waverly Pod. When summer rolls around, the last thing I want is to be stuck in the kitchen or back and forth to the grocery store. With HelloFresh, I get in and out of the kitchen and back into the sun. With HelloFresh, I can take the work out of eating well to feel my best for the summer. With calorie smart, protein smart, and vegan recipes for lunch and dinner, I can reach my goals without spending my summer calculating macros or measurements. HelloFresh also saves me time to spend less time meal planning and prepping, and more time doing my favorite summer activities at the beach or on the campground. With HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients, it's easier to get cooking quick without worrying about cups or tablespoons. No matter your lifestyle, you'll always find delicious recipes on the HelloFresh menu, like pescatarian and veggie options. Plus, you can even swap proteins and sides to make a recipe just how you like it. This is one of my favorite features about HelloFresh. I'm always finding meals that sound delicious, but there's just one thing I wish I could change. And with HelloFresh, I can. No more compromising your meals or your summer plans. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Wizard16 and use code Wizard16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Wizard16 and use code Wizard16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Ariel, why don't you start us off? I think it was demonstrated really well. I know what HelloFresh is. I know how to get HelloFresh. I know all of the different ways that HelloFresh can help me if I am looking to lose weight potentially or to, you know, it tells me about the pain points that I could possibly have and then solves those pain points for me. Maybe I'm busy. The summer, I want special summer meals. All that is there. What I thought was funny was this mention of macros and another diet related term. And this show is Wizards of Waverly Pod. It's not a health show. It's not a anything to do with that. So I was kind of like, okay, maybe this host talks about those things elsewhere on the show. If not, it kind of feels like it's coming out of nowhere. Macros and measurements is the phrase that she seems to use. I mean, I guess it's talking points that HelloFresh has provided. But to me, it was sort of like too scientific, too diet culture related to fit in here. But other than that, I liked it. I thought that she sounded friendly. It gave me more information about HelloFresh than I am used to receiving. I listen to a lot of podcasts. And as I said, when we discussed the last ad, I'm burnt out on HelloFresh. I'm burnt out on BetterHelp. I'm burnt out on everything that is a top spender, of course. How can you not be? I hear it 10 times a week. But this gave me a few other things to think about. So I liked it for that reason. I'll give it an eight. Okay, you'll give it an eight. All right, Amelia. I honestly, like, I think this is probably a seven in my opinion. I totally agree with you about the macros and measurements thing. I think maybe she was trying to get there by saying you don't have to do that. And maybe we've all heard of that. So maybe that was the sort of tie in there. But I I totally agree with you. I think... You know, when it comes from a demonstration perspective, I think if we were to just like grade this linearly, like, yes, they they hit on a lot of points, way more than BetterHelp. You know, they went through all of the details and gave a bunch of use cases. I do think that there's like a difficult fine line, like, you know, what they're trying to do by sharing all those use cases and all those specifics and stuff is making sure that there's a lot of different people that can relate and get value from this. But sometimes I think that that actually doesn't help because there's a point where it's just too much. Like, you you know, if, if you're listing out 20 different features and benefits, like you think that that actually opens the audience to, a, you know, a lot of different people liking it and relating to it. But I actually think it makes people tune out and it accomplishes the opposite. So I, again, from a demonstration perspective, yes, that she mentioned all the other, all the things. And I think that was great. But from a, you know, just a user listening to this and being like, would I be interested in HelloFresh? I think I did tune out and it missed the mark a little bit rather than just finding one thing or a couple things that, you know, even if it was only 30% of the audience would really resonate with, you know, that's probably better than saying a bunch of things that only 2% actually ended up taking away value from. Potentially using some codified language here. And then also it's not as single-minded as it could be. And and so you graded it a seven. I saw a lot of head nodding there, Paul. What about, uh, what about you? I think that there's too much in this ad. So it it demonstrates, but it maybe demonstrates too much. So one of the things I found in research is that the more focused an ad is on one or two salient points, the more likely it is that listeners remember those points and they resonate and they stay with them. 
the more you you kitchen sink it, the less people retain. And so they get more of a general kind of idea, but they don't get your specific ideas as much. And that's what I think is going on here. Whereas I think in the previous ad, we heard a lot of resonance around one particular point, which may not work for everybody, but will work really well if you identify with that persona. I like what you said. It's it's demonstrating a lot. And then that's kind of how you set that up. And then by the end, it's like, it's not demonstrating enough. It's almost like by over... By talking about so much, by doing so much, it didn't do anything. There's a great study from Millward Brown that talks about this very thing, that the more messages an ad attempts to communicate, the lower the likelihood of a single message being communicated. This one probably had four, right, at least? So you're just slicing it thinner and thinner and thinner as opposed to being single-minded. So what would you grade it? Well, if we say five is average, this is a little above average, so I'm giving it a 5.5. Okay, you guys, remind me to not bring my creative to you too early when it's in development, because I think I'd just get so crushed. Okay, Adam, go ahead. I'm going to go a little bit meta on this for a second, because I grew up watching Wizards of Waverly Place. I loved the show. I am their watcher uh, as a kid growing up. And so I'm thinking about myself now and where I am years later and the type of person who would be listening to this show. And I don't think the message lands properly for a person in my shoes, where I probably am the ideal person that would be listening to this podcast or I could imagine myself being a listener to the show. Their show is probably filled with late 20s or early 20s people who are, you know, the fans of the show that grew up watching it, so on and so on. And the ad read comes across as though it's talking to people that are in their late 30s with multiple kids. They're dealing with the conflicts of needing to plan to go on a camping trip and all these things. It didn't resonate with me at all in that regard. Like it felt like it missed the boat on me. And I'm not going through those experiences where I could definitely see myself leaning into the like, man, I am working a remote job. I am working my butt off in my 20s. All these things are stressful and cooking can sometimes just feel daunting. That is a selling point that I think would have been the better selling point to this audience in particular, where it's the ease of use, the the simplicity, the protein swaps and stuff like that are really helpful add-ins too, where I think that could have been a great second point. But I do think that it just missed the mark on who they were talking to based on an assumption I have on who the show's audience would be, which is all assumption based. I could be incredibly inaccurate on this. But with that said, I think the ad itself, if you were to place it on a different podcast, probably could have done really well for that podcast. And I think it does hit on some points that are really good. And I, you know, I don't need to say it any more than everybody else has already said it. The talking points in it felt overwhelming with information. Like it was too much where I felt like I was like, I don't know anything at this point. I just probably know enough about HelloFresh because I've heard about them a billion times elsewhere that to me, it doesn't feel that overwhelming only because I've heard it elsewhere. But if this was the only ad I had ever heard for HelloFresh, I would leave with a little bit more overwhelm rather than simplicity, which the heartbeat of HelloFresh is simplicity. They should be communicating simple messages. That's their whole brand. They want you to be able to cook simply. So I think they missed the mark on a branding perspective in that regard. I'm going to go right down the middle and say, like, if I was the brand and I heard this, I'm not going to be upset, but I'm not going to be stoked either. Uh, I'd say like a 5.5. I'll go right down the middle right there. just a little bit above average. I'll align with Paul. These splits are fascinating so far, by the way. It's mostly more favorable for Amelia and I. Or we yeah, tend to agree, funny. and the, the two men tend to agree. It's really interesting. Interesting. All right, so that ad comes in at an average of 6.5 from this fantastic pantheon of podcast professionals. And Audiolytics gave it a score of 77.7, so actually scored it a little bit higher than the previous ad. And I would attribute that to actually some of the things that I believe you guys were all dinging it for. It had some more robust information in it, and particularly in the demonstration case, even though you know, we were split on that, that there is more a fuller picture of that key component in particular. And so that's going to move the score up, but we're still below 90%, which is our target score for all in market creative. So there's still work to be done. So if we're just thinking of it as a message, we've got 180 words approximately for the talking points. If I'm too long on demonstration and my score is low in order to bring my score up, something has to come out, right? So there would be some other area we would focus on. There would be other key components that we may need to sharpen. And absolutely, like consensus here is that if we're single-minded, that then allows everything to be able to row together in the message a lot easier as opposed to it's trying to go in too many places. Let's go on to the next one. We've got Instacart at $3 million for the month of June. And this is their ad from Dispatches from Myrtle Beach. 
Okay, what's the number one reason you should try Instacart? Shopping over 1.5 million unique products from over 1,000 retailers and get everything delivered right to your door in as fast as one hour, all in one app. So you can spend more time with the ones who matter most. Visit instacart.com to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. $10 minimum per order. Additional terms apply. All right, let's start with Paul. Well, they say there's one reason, but they give two. (laughs) It is because you can get 1.5 million unique products from 1,000 retailers, but also in as fast as one hour. So that's two reasons. Now, I'm not going to ding it for that. And and I'm not sure that that causes any cognitive dissonance at the same time. Look, it's a short ad. You can only do so much work in a short ad. And so this is, in that way, focused. It is straightforward. It pretty much tells you what you need to know, right? You're going to get just about anything and you're going to get it really fast. So from that standpoint, it's doing the work. So, you know, if I'm going to give it a score, I'm going to say that it's a little, you know, it's it's a little better than average. Actually, especially for a pre-roll, we're going to go into about a 6.5 on this. Not remarkable, but, but it does the job. All right, Adam. In the context of a pre-roll, it accomplishes most of what it needs to do. The only thing that I think that could be added in here is give me a product contextualization here of exactly what types of products I could be ordering to my door. You know, you could frame it really quickly at the beginning saying like, look, did you smell your armpits? They smell bad and don't have deodorant in the house. Order now through Instacart. You can get over 1.5 million unique products from over a thousand retailers delivered right to your door in as fast as an hour. You know, just give me a product that I can imagine in my mind coming to my door. What types of products should I be ordering with Instacart? Can I order a fridge? Can I order this? What is the type of category of product that I should be thinking about when I look at using Instacart? That's the only thing that I think would give this a little bit more of an edge in terms of performance is just giving a visualization of that theater of the mind. Right now, there is no theater of the mind that I can place myself in here. Give me something. Give me something. Other than that, yeah, like six out of 10. Like it tells me what the product is. It tells me what it is. If you're running a pre-roll, you're probably already familiar. Uh, you're, you're a product that should be familiar to that audience. So you probably know more things about Instacart. This accomplishes what it's supposed to do. It's retargeting. Hey, Ariel, before I get your grade on this, just when you think about podcasting and, and podcast messages in general, like we're talking about the fact that we can see in Magellan that this is a pre-roll. How do you look at the messages and, and the difference between you know crafting something for a pre-roll versus a mid-roll versus a post-roll? Yeah, when I'm listening to a podcast and I hear a pre-roll that is not a host red ad, I usually skip through it. And full disclosure, I have a podcast about podcast recommendations and we use Spreaker's ad service and they insert those types of ads and I fully know that people skip through them. So that's the caveat there. I skip through it, you skip through it, we all skip through it. And to me, it's like it, it does the job, but maybe it's a brand awareness play and that's fine. But I don't think it's doing much to enlighten me about Instacart. I think it is just throwing the word in my face a few times. I've heard the word Instacart today. I'll hear it again tomorrow on a podcast. I haven't used Instacart in years, but it is the only thing. It is the only grocery delivery service that I can name by name. So that's something. I would give it a six. Thank you, Ariel. So we have a six, a 6.5 and a six. Amelia, how about you? I totally agree with what everybody else said. I think for a pre-roll, it did the job. Honestly, I, I wish that more brands like did some form of jingle for a pre-roll because I, like that should just be the default because I feel like there is such an opportunity for for integrating some sort of sound rather than just some random person talking. So I, I think the only thing that really didn't hit me and maybe this is just the context of the show and what they talk about, but they, they mentioned something about so you can spend more times with the ones you loved. And I just, I, I don't know that I, I think there could have been something else they could have replaced in that. I mean, when you have so few words and so few time in, um, in a pre-roll, I think it's really important to be very specific about what the copy is going to look like. And I think that that could have been switched out for something that, you know, hit a little bit harder, you know, stop lugging your groceries around or save time, something else. But it just sounded so, so fluffy, save time, um, spend time with the ones you love or whatever when it's like, how, how much does grocery shopping really take away from those sorts of things? So that was the only thing I, I would say. Again, it's a pre-roll, so it's difficult. But I would say on the scale of pre-rolls, probably a six or a seven. 6.5? Does that translate (laughs) to a 6.5? Okay. So for Instacart, we've got an average score from the group of a 6.25. 
So we've been moving down here from a 7.07 with BetterHelp, HelloFresh at a 6.5, now Instacart at a 6.25. Audiolytics also, this one scored lower in Audiolytics as well. It scored a 69.4% for many of the reasons uh, that you guys are talking about. Paul, like you said, what's the number one reason you should try Instacart? Like I get hung up on that as well, that they go two points, but nevertheless, you know, how does it work? It gives you somewhat of an idea of how it works. It can deliver so much from all these different things. I agree, Adam, kind of like what you're saying is like, let's get specific with exactly how does it work. The last one we're going to listen to here at the lowest spin for the month of June 2023, but still a lot of money, $2.5 million. We've got a spot for the Angie Group on Ratchet and Respectable. Here we go. Angie is your home for everything home, and they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience, and they've combined it with tools to simplify the whole process bring them to your project online or with the Angie app and answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or, or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. All right, let's start with Adam. I had to turn down my headphones a little bit during that one and take a, a step back. That was very in my face as an ad read, first off. And and I think that's also just the nature of the show and the nature of the host. And so within the context of the show, like not a problem. But if I was just listening to that as somebody who does not listen to the show, like that took me took me a, a second to warm up to the cadence, the speech and everything. That is my first impression of it. Uh, when it comes to the second impression of it is where it says, Angie's your home for everything home, and they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals. That's a great opening statement because they're basically telling you that first off, Angie is your access to skilled professionals for any home care need that you have from plumbing to whatever you have given me context for who this is. And then if you're a home projector and you do stuff there, you probably need some help there on occasion, unless you are a skilled trained professional. So. In that regard, I actually think they do a really good job of framing what Angie is for. They outlined really clearly that it's the easiest way to access those professionals. I like it. There's no endorsement in terms of I statements. They do give a great endorsement from saying like Angie is a great tool, but they don't say I hired someone from Angie or anything like that, which I would love to hear if there was a use case that they had used it for. That's what I would like to hear in the ad read itself. But other than that, I think it's a good ad. 7.5. All right, coming in second place right behind BetterHelp, Adam ranking Angie at a 7.5. Paul, how about you? I got lost on this ad. I know what it was talking about, but I honestly found it difficult to follow. And I do think it's the copy and delivery combined. And that, and again, I have no particular problem with the delivery. Like Adam mentions, it's probably very consistent with the podcast itself, and that's fine but it makes it really feel like a lot was being crammed in. And I, and I do think a lot was being crammed in. You know, I like that, that they mentioned the brand up front, but it really feels like this was a high school essay, thesis statement at the top, and now we're going to go in. <laughs> and, that, and that's really where it felt like, these bullet points. There's no storytelling here. And so if you're going to invest in, you know, a 60-second ad, invest in some storytelling. You have the time to do it, unlike, you know, you do in a 30-second ad. And I don't think that that's quite there. Because I what I'm going to say is, well, why do you need to make it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals? I mean, honestly, I mean, I get it. I mean, sure, fine. But, you know, hey, my brother-in-law is a carpenter. Why not use him? My friend's cousin is a plumber. Uh, it's all good. What is Angie solving for me here? And I get it sort of lower in on this. Right. You know, oh, I can compare quotes. OK, that's great. Well, maybe that's the whole thesis statement. Right. I think that it could if it was even stripped down a little bit, it would be a better ad. So with that, I come in more at, a, let's just say, a 4.75. 4.75. We just moved into the hundreds place. We're into new territory now. All right. Amelia, how about you? 
That is so funny because I love this. Like 10 out of 10, in my opinion. It's It might be the ADHD and like my talking fast and incapable of, you know, moderating my voice at a certain, you know, level. Um, but I was immediately drawn in. And again, to everybody else's point, if that is not the whole context of the rest of the show, like, okay, bad, bad, bad. That would hurt my ears. You know, the fact that Adam said he had to turn the volume down, probably not a great experience, but it got my attention. I don't have a home. I've never heard of Angie, but like now I know, and and I would totally use this. I think they did a really good job of, uh, you know, all the different use cases there it was all centered around one thing. So I don't, I think it did a better job of like the too much demonstration. Like it wasn't this, this, if you're a commercial person, real estate guy, or if you're, you know, it was just, all right, if you have a phone home and you know, fixing your home sucks because you, you need a people that you can trust. Like that was the takeaway there. And I really liked it. I really did. Yeah, I, I honestly, 10 out of 10. 10, okay. A 10, a 4.75 and a 7.5. Ariel, what do we do? I have a few things to say about this. The first is the energy worked for me. However, yeah, I mean, I think you really need to understand this host to understand this host's ad reads. And it does not work out of context, but it doesn't need to work out of context, right? Like Lindsey Graham, for example, the podcaster, not the senator, is often doing host read ads on other shows because his voice is just a voice, right? Like he, at this point, Wondery uses his voice and that's great. He can be placed anywhere and it makes sense. This person could not be placed anywhere and make it make sense. This person has to be on Ratchet and respectable. One thing I loved is that he made a verb out of it. You got to Angie that and that could be copy or it could be him. But either way, I thought that that was something that that was great. It makes me associate with the brand a little bit more. It makes it makes it into a verb. We like that. Everybody wants their product to be made into a verb. Everybody wants that kind of name recognition. So if this person can make that take off, I'm sure Angie could, would be very happy. One thing that was not mentioned that is mentioned in other ad reads for Angie that I've heard is that Angie is rebranded from Angie's List. And that is something that has been mentioned on other podcast. And I wonder if at this point, Angie is now saying we're done with that. We've done the the switch. But I kind of still thought I was like, is this another product? Or is it Angie's list rebranded as Angie? I was not sure as somebody who does have prior recognition of Angie. And so most of the other ad reads I've heard about it will mention that in some way. And this did not. So with that in mind, the excitement got me. I think if I love this host, I would love this ad read. I still would not necessarily be interested in purchasing right now. But if I ever needed to, I would only know of Angie's list. And therefore, I give it a 6.2. <laughs> a 6.2. All right, guys. So that is all four of them. And this last one, Angie, from an Audiolytics standpoint, scored a 73.8%. So right in there with the rest of them. And what I'm noticing across all of these is like just your scores and the Audiolytics scores pretty much tracked. BetterHelp at a 7.07. .07. Average with Audiolytics at a 74.4. The HelloFresh ad at an average of 6.5 and Audiolytics at a 77.7, .7, and we identified that's because some of the stuff that might have caused us to grade it down is some of the stuff Audiolytics might have said, well, at least that information was in there, so that's an interesting one. Instacart, average of 6.25, and Audiolytics score of 69.4, and then Angie at an average of 7.11, and an Audiolytics score of 73.8. That is so close with BetterHelp. I think what I wanna ask the group is, can we tip the scales one way or the other? The big takeaways I've got here for Chief Audio Officers is like, one, a single-minded message is better. And that was something we kind of saw all of these struggle with, right? We need to strip down the message and really focus. And we all believe in and want to use the theater of the mind, but I, I don't think I'm going out here on a limb you guys check me on this. I don't know if any of these did a great job of using the theater of the mind. Yeah, I think after the first or second one, I even stopped finding what the theater of the mind was in each one. And I just started commenting on each of them as ads in and of themselves. Not not so much for that one perspective. Yeah, I, I would almost say in a declining progression from the first one, they slowly lost theater of mind, as Ariel was saying. The first one had a clear image in your mind of, look, imagine this, a scale or whatever. And I think that's an in exchange of personal endorsement. And so if you are not giving a personal endorsement for a product of how you use it in your life, you need to find an exchange in which you can place the product in the hands of your listeners and how they could see them using the product or imagining the product or whatever it is. If you're not going to give an endorsement of how you've used it in your life, find a way to show them how they could use it in theirs more physically or visually in the mind. That's a great point, Adam. I think that's exactly what you do with a good announcer read, with good voice talent, right? And 
I mean, that's really in the copywriting is really where that is. And that's really in the messaging strategy is, is pulling out those points. You can honestly only expect a podcast host to do so much work without guidance. It's, it's hard. It's hard to do these and hard to do them well. And the more guidance that the brand and their agency provide with regard to where to focus, the better they do. And of course, th that comes much more to the fore when you have to work with an announcer or a producer because you have to do that work for them. But thinking about it from that standpoint of what can we provide them if it's not an endorsed read? What are the examples we can we can perhaps give them to choose from? Of which of these kind of would resonate with you and where would and where you are in your life? I think that's a really excellent point. And Amelia, your your summary thoughts in in looking at these, going, hey, we want to be single minded. We want to make sure that we're focused. But wow, did we did these really use the theater of the mind as well as they could have? I think the first one was probably the closest and I still think there's a lot of improvement there. But I mean, I can't say that I was picturing any certain situation for me in the in the last couple by any means. But I definitely would tip the scales on the Angie side, but that's just me. Gotcha. And what about the rest of you? Better help or Angie? If we had a champion of this episode, would it be the better help spot or the Angie spot? I'm better help. I mean, I think that it it was focused. It would resonate with a particular persona. It did everything that you could ask for in a in a single ad, I think. And but no brand should live or die on a single on a single ad or even a single set of copy. I too would vote for better help for the same reasons. Yeah, I'm with Amelia. It's definitely Angie for me. I just thought it was way more fun. And as a consumer, maybe not from the brand perspective, but from the consumer perspective, I would be much more likely to go to Angie.com over BetterHelp based on the excitement of the host. All I want to do now is to run a brand lift test on this. I want to get 400 podcast listeners together, have them listen and tell me what they think. I always want to check my assumptions against what we can learn from a panel who are, are not thinking about it the way I am. Great point. Do it. And we'll come back and talk about the results. Thank you all. I think that another theme that I would take out of this is another quote from Aristotle, I have to say, from 2,300 years ago. We'll, we'll just whip around. For of speaker, subject, and person addressed, the hearer determines the speech's end and object. Audience first messaging, right? We talked about that a lot, right? The energy level, what messages resonated with us differently depending on who we are in the audience. We have to always keep that in mind. And then part of what I think makes ad infinitum special is that we don't always get to control that and all kinds of people are going to be hearing the ad. So those two things are simultaneously true. In general, what I see is let's keep the audience in mind, keep the message single-minded, strip it down, keep it focused, and leverage the power of the theater of the mind. Here we see the top spenders in podcast for the month of June for a grand total $19 million. And on average, from an audiolytic standpoint, they're scoring a 73.8%. And then from our group here, we got an average score of 6.73 out of 10. The point is there is room for improvement. And this is the top of the heap on the spend, right? So there's so much opportunity in this space. There's so much opportunity in audio. That's why it's important for us to stop listen to what the people that are spending the most that are doing in the space and how we can improve the messages that we're putting out into the space. So thank you, Amelia, Adam, Ariel, and Paul for joining Ad Infinitum, where we discuss audio advertising and break down audio ads. Thanks, Stu. Thank you for having us. you. All right. This week, we focused on Audiolytics key component number four, demonstration. I'd say, guys, we demonstrated how it works when it comes to a powerful podcast panel, right? We did it. All right, if you've got aspects of audio advertising you'd like to discuss or suggestions for a guest on the show or want to be a guest, please email creative at oxfordroad.com. That's C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E at oxfordroad.com. And until our next show, remember to have fun making the ads work.